Welcome to Who the Hell Is, our new book series which takes difficult theories from the world's greatest intellectuals and presents them in an accessible, engaging and most importantly jargon-free way. This is the first of a series of videos in which we're going to look at Aristotle's fundamental concepts. These are taken from Chapter 3 of Who the Hell is Aristotle, written by the brilliant Amanda Forshaw for the philosophy section of our Who the Hell is series. So who the hell is Aristotle and what the hell was he on about? Well, whenever you turn on a television and see an advert, or look at a billboard, or watch a political speech or a Hollywood film, you are seeing the legacy of Aristotle in action. Aristotle's Poetics and Rhetoric, written in the 4th century BCE, are still required reading for aspiring speakers and screenwriters everywhere. He is one of the most important and influential philosophers who has ever lived. Aristotle was a true polymath, and the breadth of his investigations cut across all aspects of nature, the universe, and the human condition. But there are certain ideas that underpin everything he wrote. The overriding driver throughout his life was the pursuit of knowledge. He believed that all men by nature desire to know. In this first video, we're going to take a look at Aristotle's theory of knowledge, which is based on the study of things that exist or happen in the world. Like his mentor, Plato, Aristotle wanted to find an anchor in a world of change, some absolute truth on which everything could be built. While Plato's background was in mathematics and he sought explanations of the world in abstract concepts, Aristotle's interest in the world was scientific. He used his observations of the world to develop ideas rooted in experience and information gained through our senses. Plato and Aristotle agreed that beings and substances continually change. For example, living things age and die, and substances can be changed into other things, such as the wood from a tree can be made into a chair. What this means is that while we cannot have knowledge of the thing itself, because it is always changing, what we can have knowledge of is the thing's substance, its universal form or essence. It is at this point that their ideas diverge. Plato believed a form to be independent of its physicality, that it can only be known if we are willing to go beyond this world and into the realm of the intelligent, into the world of forms, that only philosophers are capable of entering through practising the dialectic. But this is a subject for another video. For Aristotle, there is nothing otherworldly about an object of knowledge. It can be known through its very essence. So for Aristotle, the creation of knowledge goes something like this. First, we use our senses to create an impression of something. For example, we see a Shetland pony and we store its form away in our mind, along with all other forms we have come across. In this way, we are gaining experience of the world. Next, we use our judgment. Through our memory bank, which has stored all those repeated impressions of different forms, our mind has the ability to find what is common among all the different forms. Through our experience, when we come across a Shetland pony, we note what it is about this living thing that is universal to all other creatures of the same type. We see the horse-like characteristics of the pony and note that it does not have the form of a dog or a cat, but the form of a horse. What we are seeing is the thing's universal form, not its particular form. It is the horsiness that the Shetland pony shares with other horses that Aristotle would call the essential nature of what it is to be a horse. Aristotle argued that what was true of things in the natural world is also true of abstract concepts and ideas. For example, we observe human actions and see that some are just and some are unjust. From our observations and reason, we begin to understand the characteristics that make up justice. Once we have built up a picture of these characteristics, we can observe justice, or the lack of it, in all things. So to conclude, it is the combined use of our senses and our minds which are able to form judgments based on experience that create the foundations of scientific knowledge. And that, we hope, has whetted your appetite for finding out just what the hell Aristotle was going on about. But we've only just begun. If you've enjoyed this video, then please don't forget to like it. For a more comprehensive look at Aristotle's life, influences and theories, then check out Who the Hell is Aristotle by Amanda Forshaw in the link below. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to catch all our new videos coming soon.